Hey guys, what's up? You're watching iGAN. My name is Bharat Nagpal and this is the Kia Sonnet. We're checking out this car today. You can see we have it in this blue color. It's going to be available in a bunch of colors and we're going to give you all the details of the Kia Sonnet in our video today. So stay tuned. Let's quickly get started. So some of the iconic uh, Kia features, we've got a full LED headlamp over here. You can see the Tiger nose grille. Of course, we are looking at the GT line. So you can see these red accents and also the red accent on the front bumper. This is iconic. Uh, this variant has uh, this blacked out chrome with a diamond pattern. And you'll see this outside as well as inside the car. The hood has these scoops on the side. So the center area is kind of lifted, uh, gives it a very aggressive and mean look and uh, it makes you feel like there is a large engine inside uh, but we'll talk about engine options in just a minute but lots of anger and rage can be seen on the front of uh, the car you can also see the fog lamps on the bottom over there so this is the side profile of uh, the sonnet it's very familiar if you've seen uh, the seltos you'll see that the lines on the car are also very familiar one thing that i do like is uh, that the back slopes down quite quickly so it gives it that slightly larger SUV look. So you'll see that here it stops, but they continue to give you this black accent, this panel, uh, which sort of blends in with the glass. This is a plastic panel, but it blends in with the glass, uh, making it feel like this is a glass part, but it's a plastic panel on the side. On the bottom, uh, the red accents continue. So you've got drum brakes on the back and uh, you've got disc brakes on the front. The wheels on the back have uh, the red accent in the center cap and you can see that the Kia logo is in uh, the black background. On the front, you have the same center cap, but uh, you also get uh, the disc brakes and you also get the red calipers in uh, the GT line. So also here you can see plastic roof rails and uh, you have lots of chrome accents on the door as well. So you can see on the window, the chrome accent continues all the way to the front. You can see the badge for the DCT, which is the dual clutch transmission in this one. Let's move on over to the back. So on the back, you can see there is a rear wiper, the third tail lamp on the top over here. There's also a single modern style, single rear lamp. Uh, this is basically a tail lamp, it will turn on at night. And uh, then you do have LED tail lamps, uh, which are for braking as well as reversing. There is a reversing camera that's located right here, just above the Kia logo. It's got quite a nice view. We'll show you on the inside when we show you the infotainment panel. The bottom gives you this effect where uh, there are tail pipes coming out of the back but there aren't, so there is some fakery going on. These are just uh, plastic uh, cutouts and grills, and there's also a diffuser, but it's not really a diffuser. So it gives you that, again, aggressive, sporty effect. Red accents continue on the back of the car as well. So one thing you will appreciate is uh, this button. It allows you to unlock the car as long as the key is in your pocket. So you do that, and then you enter inside. So seats here are uh, super comfortable. And uh, they've got this uh, black seat, but you've got uh, red accents. So you've got the GT Line logo in red. You also have red stitching and you have these red perforations. Perforations are good because the car has uh, ventilated seats, which is absolutely blissful in this blistering hot heat. Good thing is that there are two cup holders here and uh, these cup holders hold my mask and the sanitizer, but also will hold your drinks. And the center notch will hold your phone whether it's a small phone or a large phone, they'll fit in here without any problem. There's also some storage space here, not the greatest, very tiny center console, uh, but you do have that space here. So if you want to put something, you can. And this also is the air purifier. So you can see on the display on the back. So you've got this really nice uh, textured material over here. And like I said, diamond blacked out pattern in the AC vents. What I don't like about the dashboard is that if you put something, it'll mostly slide off and you have to be careful. We've already dropped a couple of phones from here, so you don't want to drop more. Uh, the glove box is pretty spacious. We've got the owner's manual and some other cards in there, but uh, not the biggest. So when you look at the doors, they look like they're of soft materials, but it's all plastic, so it mimics a leather-like finish, but it's completely plastic. You have this chrome accent. I don't know why it's there, but it sort of is a continuation of uh, the door opening sort of pull handle here. Uh, this one is a soft material, so this has that leather-like finish. And again, red stitching to match the seats. 
There is lighting in uh, this door pocket and you can fit in a large size bottle here, no problem. And you can see the Bose speakers. There is also a tweeter over here. Looking at the engine here, uh, this is the one liter GDI. Uh, this has 120 horsepower and uh, you also get 172 Newton meter of torque. The dual clutch transmission allows it to get really peppy, uh, which this car is. You can see that the engine has been laid out quite nicely. It's easily serviceable as well. The battery is over here and uh, you can also see the fuse box is conveniently located over here. So you can access all your fuses in case you want to swap them out. If a fuse blows or if a relay blows, they're all here. On the left here, uh, you do have uh, the windshield washer. And then, of course, this is the coolant top up. And this appears to be the brake oil and your engine oil refuel cap is over here as well. There is this tiny engine cover. So there is a three cylinder engine under this cover and uh, you can see the coils over there. So pretty nicely laid out and this cover helps. It's also dampened, so it'll store in some of the noise. So let's go check out the trunk. There's quite a lot of space in here as well. Uh, you can see that our cooler fits in there without any problem. In fact, speaking of cooler, I'm going to grab my Ho Garden. Of course, it's Ho Garden Zero. So let's check out the car. So the back here also, if you remove this and look under this cover, you can see that there is a full size spare, which is excellent because not a lot of cars come with a full size spare. Now the parcel tray is also nice. It lifts up with the tailgate, but you can detach it if you want, but it's pretty spacious. I think you can fit in easily two large size suitcases. So also for people who are shorter, there's a grab handle here. So you can just grab the tailgate and bring it down so that you can easily close it. So here, there's a lot of space. I've got my large size bottle in the door and uh, cup holders in the armrest. I can also remove the cup holders and the armrest, it goes away. The seats on the back are not ventilated. And there is a little bit of a transmission tunnel and uh, there is a USB socket for power. There's a little bit of a hole here. So if you want to store some stuff here, maybe a phone, maybe a power bank, you can do that. There are some tiny vents on the back and the air purifier display is also on the back over here. Now the seat is in the position that I sit in and in that position, I can't sit behind myself, but somebody who's about five feet, five inches can easily sit in the back just behind me. And that'll be spacious enough for that person. So inside uh, the Kia Sonnet, there's a quite a lot of space. I'm 6'2", I just about reach. Uh, the seat is in uh, the lowest position. You can increase the height and decrease the height. I have a good comfortable uh, seating place, even though if I sort of sit up all the way, my head will touch and uh, the sunroof does eat into uh, that headroom quite a little bit. There was an interesting question in our first uh, video and uh, the person was like, if you're 6'2", can you drink water from a bottle of water? and I wanted to test it. I haven't done it yet, so let's see. And uh, this is a large size bottle, but you can also have a smaller size bottle. So the bottle will not fit. Maybe a smaller size bottle will fit. I don't know how many people uh, need this test, but it works. Uh, this bottle fits into the door panel quite well. If you come here, you can see that uh, there are these reading lamps and uh, sunglasses holder, which is convenient because I'll need this right now when I go for my drive. This is the rear view mirror as well. And you can see we have the smart features. So there's an SOS button in case of emergency. There's also a towing service that you can directly call in case your car has broken down. And then you also have the UVO connect feature. So you can call in the UVO assistant from here. The rear view mirror is nice and large. You can see all the way to the back. And uh, there's also an auto dimming feature. Uh, the sensor will know if there is too much light from the headlight and it'll dim the mirror for you. And uh, then here, the visor doesn't have a vanity mirror for the driver, but you do have a document holder. On the left, you do have uh, a vanity mirror so that you can see Anand looking at you, looking at himself, looking at you. And of course, we have a nice sunroof here. It's not a full panoramic, but you do get quite a lot of light inside the cabin. And of course, you can open this up all the way. And uh, if you don't want to open it up all the way and you just want some sort of fresh air, you can lift it up as well. So it lifts up like that and uh, you get some fresh air ventilation while you drive. So I think the maximum attention will go to this 10.25 inch uh, display over here. It's a touchscreen. You can see your air quality information is also here because there is an air purifier in the car. Uh, but lots of controls in the touchscreen. And as you can see, it's super smooth and fast with respect to uh, general touch responsiveness. Even though the maps 
aren't the fastest and that probably is because it takes a little bit of a time to load up the maps but if you want to pinch in you can pinch in and multi gesture support works really well so what it's lagging with is because it has to load the maps but otherwise the touch screen is super fluid and super responsive uh, as you can see over here so lots of configuration over here and uh, with the smart air purifier you can really control whether or not you want the smart air purifier it also has a perfume dispenser you can enable or disable it you can also manually uh, turn on uh, the perfume if that's what you want you also get a compass over here there's also the ability to turn off uh, the display from uh, here so if you want to turn off the air purifier's display you can do that from here as well lots of controls lots of technology uh, you can like i said android auto and carplay is here but you also have some lighting controls and uh, there are some ambient lights in the doors uh, so you can change the lighting from here and you have quite a few options and you can also have it change as per the music and you can also put it on party mode where it blinks through all of the various color options you can just have it on a simple glow and choose a single color uh, which will be my preferred way of uh, using it uh, but you have tons of colors over here and you can set the brightness as per your requirement so over here we do have uh, the wireless charging mat and so you can simply place your phone and it will start charging wirelessly uh, which is great uh, you also have uh, two usb ports over here uh, one is just for power while the other one is for connecting with the infotainment which will allow you to have android auto as well as apple carplay and then you also have a 12 volt socket here uh, to connect additional usb ports or any 12 volt accessory and uh, you can also connect a cigarette lighter if you do smoke you do have some additional space over here it's grippy but it's plasticky so if you put down coins or anything it's going to rattle around here uh, we are in uh, the automatic so standard gear shifter a uh, very nice very comfortable to use and you do have the ability to go into manual mode so you can uh, move up and down in terms of gears from here there's a lot of this diamond uh, plating around the car this gives it a really nice premium look we've got a blacked out sort of chrome here uh, the vents are really nice very well uh, designed uh, the only issue is that you can't reduce the airflow from here you can only turn them off so you, if you bring them down it gives you a very satisfying click and locks them into place so they're very well made and positioning them is also really nice uh, they can uh, direct air very well so climate control is over here and uh, for your fan speed uh, the buttons are over here there's only a single climate there's no dual climate zone uh, but really nice buttons physical buttons to control your climate and change the modes so what i don't like about this even though all of this is really nice and tactile i don't like that this is a lot of wasted space and could be a nice large display but it seems they've gone with this tiny display which uh, looks like you would find something in a entry level car which this is not so controls are very easy to use because everything is old style analog buttons and uh, then you have the ability to turn on ventilated seats in this variant uh, so we do have ventilated seats for both the driver as well as the passenger and you can set your various levels you have the ability to change your drive mode so we can go from sport to eco mode uh, to a normal city driving mode of course you can also increase your traction go to snow mud or sand uh, depending on what you want pop the car into reverse and you will see uh, the reverse parking camera you can see it's got a really nice and large uh, screen here for the camera and a really nice very high quality display and then of course you have the parking sensors here as well so you get triple parking sensors for the front as well as dual parking sensors uh, lots of coverage around the car allowing you to park more efficiently so when you change your drive modes you can see the information in the instrument cluster this cluster is really nice and vivid you get your uh, rev counter or your rpm counter on the left uh, you get your fuel gauge on the right as well as the temperature on the right bottom a really nice and large uh, speedometer in the center so the steering wheel is also very well laid out you get your voice assistant over here and your mode for switching between fm and maybe bluetooth from your smartphone uh, volume controls and a selector switch over here you have the call button and also a custom button you can set it to anything that you want ideally you would set it to your phone favorites on the right side you do have the ability to switch from uh, different things on uh, the instrument cluster 
as well as cruise control settings and you can reset and set from here and again ok and cancel is all for cruise control settings from here as well as the infotainment so we have a lot of connected car features of course you have kia's uvo connect over here so you can connect uh, via the app and get all of your features and uh, you can also connect via uh, a smartwatch so if you have an apple watch you can connect via that as well you also have the ability to look at vehicle diagnostics and uh, those kind of things but because this has apple carplay uh, you can directly jump to the Apple CarPlay screen. It's quite fast, super responsive on this. It doesn't take up the full screen as uh, some new cars do. Uh, but the fact that it has Apple CarPlay in this price bracket is really nice. Of course, you can press Kia to come back to the Kia screen here. The smart air purifier is quite nice and it does open up uh, the air quite a lot. And uh, you do have all that information over here. I want to show you some of the Uvo Connect features. So let's quickly get into that. So you have the UO app over here and I'm in the vehicle health report. It gives you the location of the car and you can see the vehicle health report, uh, the powertrain, brake system, electric power steering, everything seems to be fine right now. Uh, you do have uh, the remote control feature so you can lock, unlock the car. You can also set the climate before you leave. So if you want to set the temperature before you leave for how much time. So you can have the engine running, the AC on for 10 minutes before you leave so that it cools the car. You can also stop the engine or start the engine. You also have your profile settings and you also have the air purifier settings. You can see that it coordinates directly with the car and it tells you what the air quality index inside the car has been. And as you can see that it's been improving since the car has been running. So it started somewhere around the 40 mark and it's now down to 20, which is excellent because the air quality inside the car is excellent. And like I said, there is a perfume diffuser as well. If uh, you have stinky people in your car, the perfume diffuser will help you deal with that. Okay guys, uh, so we are finally driving the Kia Sonnet something that I've been looking forward to. It's a very comfortable car to be in and uh, the petrol engine, the GDI 1 liter, is extremely refined. So speaking of engine options, uh, we do have quite a lot of engine options here. We've got a 1.2 liter petrol engine, which is the base variant. It produces 83 horsepower and 115 Newton meters of torque. This one is uh, the 1 liter turbo GDI. This produces 120 horsepower along with 172 Newton meters of torque. There's also two diesel engines, 1.5 liter, both of them. One is a WGT, the other is a VGT. The WGT produces 100 horsepower, whereas the VGT produces 115 horsepower, along with 240 and 250 Newton meters of torque, respectively. For the transmission, we also have quite a lot of options. This one has uh, the seven dual clutch transmission. Uh, so there's seven gears, uh, there's also a six uh, which is an intelligent manual transmission where you don't have to press the clutch but you have to change the gears. We also have a 5-speed manual and a 6-speed manual transmission. The 5-speed manual is in the base variant of the petrol engine and uh, the 6-speed manual is in the base variant of the diesel engine. The 1.5-litre diesel engine is also available with a 6-speed automatic transmission that is not a dual clutch transmission. So you will get all of those options plus you get really cool features. The ventilated seats must have uh, the sunroof is something that you can get. It's not really something that I would say is a must have, but it definitely gives more light into the cabin. Uh, the touchscreen is impressive. The 10.25 inch touchscreen, uh, the UVO Connect features are amazing. The horn on this car is pretty loud. So you can hear that it's pretty loud. So they've, they've managed to put in quite a lot of things. So you also get uh, 16 inch wheels in uh, the GT line. There are 15 inch wheels gonna be available for uh, the other variants as well. So quite a lot of versatility with respect to options in this car. And that is something that you have to appreciate. They've also added certain other features, which are the need of the hour, including a air purifier that is built into the cabin. Um, you have, uh, like I mentioned, ventilated seats, you have climate control, you have the ability to start your car from uh, the smartphone and uh, then set the climate before you get into the car. So if you live in a city like Delhi, where it gets really hot, and if your car is parked in the sun, you can turn on the car, have uh, the climate control running for about 10 minutes, cool the car before you get to the car. So all of these features really make this a worthwhile option, uh, really make this an interesting proposition in this price bracket. Uh, the design of the car, the drivability, the one liter engine doesn't feel like a one liter engine. It, it's really ready to go. Uh, you can hit the top speed mark quite easily. Uh, we went to about 140 kilometers per hour and that's just comfortable to drive. And uh, there's really no problem that I can point out with respect to drivability. The suspension is really comfortable. Uh, we managed to go over uh, quite a 
broken part of the road as well without any issues. Um, the cabin is relatively quiet. There's a lot of cabin noise coming from the road. Uh, but it's an easy, comfortable car to drive. So now with there being lots of things to like, there are also a few things that I'm uh, relatively bothered by. I'm not sure if there are big issues. So uh, the top cards of uh, the door are all plastic. Uh, the dashboard is all plastic. It's extremely scratchy. That makes it feel a little cheap. Uh, the center aircon control LCD display is also quite tiny. That could have been bigger. But this is just me nitpicking things. Uh, the glossy plastic on uh, the infotainment system surround is also something that will scratch easily over time. Again, nitpicking things, we are trying to find issues with the car, but these are the only real issues uh, that I found so far, apart from the fact that the dashboard is sloped down and if you keep your phone on it or anything on it, it's going to fall down. Unless you keep it behind the infotainment display, then it will really hold it, but that's not a recommended area to put anything. Uh, the left side is slopey, so that is something uh, that you can easily fix by possibly adding one of those anti-slip mats uh, but apart from that the cabin is quite nice it's quite modern very well equipped with terms of technology and features and uh, you can't really complain about what you're getting for the price that you're paying for this car So we've already shown you the GT line, but I also wanted to show you the key differences from the exterior on the tech line here as well. So we've got the tech line on the left and the GT line on the right. Immediately you can see the difference in the grille. So you can see that the GT line has a different grille, whereas the tech line has a more subtle grille and there's no red accents. The intake at the bottom here is completely different. And if you see in the GT line, we also have the red accent and a completely different intake over here. If we come to the side, you can see that the wheels are slightly different. There are no center red caps. The calipers are not red colored. So on the side also, you can see that the red accent is replaced with a silver accent. The wheels are different. And here, instead of the chrome trim, you get a matte black trim, uh, which I think kind of looks nice. I prefer the matte black versus the chrome. You see that this one has a different interior, almost a dual tone interior with an ivory seat uh, with black on the back and I still have ventilated seats here. Again, I like this trim quite a lot and I think this will be the preferred choice for a lot of people. So this one is the intelligent manual transmission. So you can see that despite there being a gear shift, there is no clutch in this vehicle because you can just switch the gears without pressing on the clutch. So over at the back also slight differences. Uh, the back bumper is silver instead of gloss black. Also this diffuser type of thing is also silver instead of it being gloss black. There is no red line, instead you get a black line in the back bumper. So there you go guys, uh, that was our first drive with the Kia Sonnet. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button if you're not already a part of Team IGAN. We're now delivering the cars back to Kia's B360 here at Cyber Hub in Gurgaon. We will be reviewing the cars at a later date, so we'll come back to you with a full review. Till then, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one.